my colleague and my friend Andrew Bolt because he's always got such incredible insight uh, and compassion, but also understanding at moments like this. And as we're all just, again, trying to get our head around things and it's not as frenetic as it was 24 hours ago and it now starts to feel slightly different now, uh, I wanted the chance to have a chat to him tonight. Uh, I'm sorry these are the circumstances under which we chat, to my dear friend, but what an incredible thing for all of us to watch and now deal with. I know, it's the... Uh the waste, the senselessness of it. I mean, we're all trying to think of a way to rationalise it, to come up with, uh, if only we do this, we can be safe going to a supermarket but uh, or a, a, a shopping mall. But seriously, it's one of those, you know, before, I think this is one of the reasons so many people think, oh, Islamic terrorism, that will explain it. Or then later these crazies on the internet say, oh, no, it's a Jewish guy, Benjamin Cohen, what done it? You know, it's it, it just obscene stuff. Uh, fighting this proxy war uh, on this tragedy, when in fact now we know uh, it was a schizophrenic man, a Joel Couchy from Queensland. How are you going to defend yourself from that? How would you predict, you know, oh, I should go to, you know, that shop and not this shop, or I should not shop on a Saturday. There's nothing. It was just so random. And you actually saw, you know, how random it was in the choice of victims, apart from one thing, that so many were women. But, I mean, you had the daughter of a multimillionaire as one of the victims, you know, John Singleton's daughter. My sympathies go out to the family. But also uh, a Pakistani uh, a refugee who was uh, acting as a security guard, also dead. I mean... It's just so random, which in a way makes it so perplexing, doesn't it? But I will say, even though it's too easy, we don't know enough. We, we simply don't know enough to say, look, one lesson from this is this, right? Yeah. We, we just don't know. But it raises something. We are told uh, Joel Couchy was schizophrenic, offers med medication because sometimes, you know, it can suppress the libido. People are doing really well. They think, uh, I don't need the medication anymore. So often that doesn't turn out to be true. And he also took ice. Now, again, we do not know to what extent some of that was contributing factors here. Maybe he went back on his meds. I don't know. But just speaking in, generally, in general, is it, do we need something some form of obligation for people who are diagnosed schizophrenic to keep taking their meds. I know it's an imposition on the human rights unless they get medical permission to go off, mm. right? Maybe if they've... Or um, maybe it's time we stopped this trend to, to you know, treat drugs like ice as a health issue. No, when you take it, you are taking a drug that could really make you dangerous. You're priming yourself up potentially, not obviously in all circumstances, otherwise it would have tragedies everywhere, but you're priming yourself to be dangerous to others. And I think this should really be treated as a hard out crime and not a health issue. I also, at the start, trying to talk about things that again, I, you know, you know how this works after being around it as long as you have, which is that there's going to be a race for the, the hot take, the if only this, if only that, right? And there's going to be yeah. some really stupid things yep, yep. that are going to be said in the next couple of days by people who are going to claim that they mean well, but we all know they're trying to sort of bend this arc in, in, in a certain direction. But I am going to say mm -hmm. what I said at the start, which was that when we had Port Arthur, there was the reaction of trying to make people safer by reducing the number of guns in the country. I know there are some people watching us now that are um, still frustrated about how that worked, but as a principle, clearly it was one that everyone united around. Um, I think we've got to have a conversation about, and a really serious, deep, uh, boring one, frankly, which is not going to be fun for the internet or the rest of it, about mental health, which is that we moved away from institutionalisation a couple of generations ago, and I keep thinking about the family in Toowoomba. If they knew that their son was in a world of pain or potential, uh, um, you know, uh, could, could become violent to somebody else, they should have a power to be able to, to try to take that person off the streets. 
Look, I, I tend to agree. With, again, I make the caveat, we simply do not know enough, Absolutely. right? And it's a temptation always, exactly as you just said, to reach for the, well, the lesson from this is bang, and then we're going to be safer. And I guess we need that security blanket. But just again, speaking generally, now in this case, we were told, you know, this man was known to police. Generally, if someone who is schizophrenic is known to police, as in police came around a number of times to deal with whatever was, was happening, maybe like I'm saying that, you know, is it, is it time that we thought what comes first is not just the safety of others, but also their own safety. I mean, yes. this man is now dead, for instance. But also the safety of the, the family, you know. You say, oh, the family should have the power. Sometimes you're talking about people who love their children dearly and do not want to call the police on them for one reason or another, but, you know, to keep a bond. But if the police have been there a number of times, what, what, what is our proper response there? And again, you know, you're thinking... We're getting so many instances, it seems, I haven't seen the stats, someone will probably correct me, but it seems to me more people troubled by current or past drug use than uh, 50 years ago for sure, and very troubled, right? That, for instance, marijuana, um, use by the young can actually trigger the kind of psychoses where people do hear voices. And if you've got an underlying uh, condition of, uh, you know, schizophrenia, it can actually make that worse. It opens the door to a way worse And then if you problem. take uh, meth, yeah, well, exactly. If you take methamphetamines, then you've got a real... You, you could have a real, real problem. And I wonder whether we should stop treating this as, oh, look, the ultimate individual expression, it's just personal choice, and if we find someone that's got, you know, doing some of this, it's a health issue, don't make it a criminal issue. Like I say, we, we make it a criminal issue if you drive too fast in a car, because, all right, it might be a safe driver, you know, you might be a Formula One driver, and you, you can handle a car at 140k in a 60 zone, but you're a menace to others, and that's a crime. Maybe we should be start look a little more severely at that. I don't know. Thank you for the chat tonight, mate. No doubt you will uh, remonstrate and have plenty more to say tomorrow, 7 o'clock, uh, in your normal time slot. But thanks for the chat tonight, mate. Appreciate it. Pleasure.